You know what made this day even better, right? I just looked out the window and the snow is not sticking. <laughs> oh man, because I looked, I saw it still coming down. I was like, oh my goodness, I might have to shovel snow. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I they won't tell us an opening statement to cover some of those questions. Well, uh, you know, first of all, man, this is such a blessing, and I'm so thankful that God picked me to be here at this time. And I, I'm, I mean, it just, it, I, sometimes it's kind of overwhelming when you sit there before the game and you see our student body. I mean, like, how about that, that crowd, right? And it's, just incredible, man. I, I, I'm just super thankful. I'm uh, thankful for our young men who have this grit and resolve about them that it doesn't matter what's going on. Like they figure out a way and, and they've got this great belief, not just in themselves, but in our staff and, and what we're telling them and asking them to do. And uh, they just stay together. And so um, the most important thing about today was that we protected our home court, right? And uh, that, that was the most important thing. Coach, was today kind of a study and perseverance by you guys? Uh, man, perseverance is such a, a big word. I, I, we knew this game uh, was going to be like this. We knew it was going to be a 40-minute grinder, and every possession was going to matter, and um, they would make runs, and we would make runs. And uh, I, I think our guys understanding that mindset going in uh, didn't allow themselves to get flustered by anything. And was that, you were down eight, was that about three minutes stretch as well as you guys have played all year? Um, yeah, I mean, I just remember the, the noise the crowd was making, right? Like every deflection, every tip, every bucket, like the decimal meters just kept going up and up. And, you know, when your crowd is loud, the louder they are, the faster you should play. And, uh, and our guys bought into it, so it was, it was pretty cool. After the equity that you kind of put into it, how rewarding was it to kind of hear Sandstorm kind of go off the way that you'd like it to go off? Um, very proud to hear that. I actually did not know when they played it, right? <laughs> like I was in doing what I was doing, but uh, Gene told me afterwards. And so, so proud of our student body. And uh, I mean, we got a great group of students and, and they, are, they are buying into to what it means to build a championship culture and to, and to really love our university and what we are about. And so uh, uh, just proud of them. As soon as you guys go down 45 to 37, you bounce right back. Did you learn anything about your team then, or did you already know that they had that kind of resolve? No, I, I knew we had that kind of resolve. In the timeout, I told them, hey, it's, we're going to score, right? And then it's going to be a, a six-point game. That's a two-possession game, and there's a lot of time on the clock. And they said, OK, and they went out and they executed. What can you say about Ish Masood's consistent energy off the bench? Uh, that Ish is, uh, like, so we, like, there's this phrase these days uh, where people call someone um, a two-way player, right? Oh, he's a two-way player. And, uh, like, I know in football, right, like, there's an offense and there's a defense and you sub and you have a punter and a kicker and they're, like, those kind of things. But in, in the game of basketball, everybody has to do everything, right? There's, we don't get to pause it when it crosses half court and then put a next group in. And what Ish is buying into is being a complete player and understanding that all the little things matter, right? Not just the ball going in the hole. And uh, in fact, he turned down a three I wanted him to shoot. And so we'll go, you know what I mean? Like us understanding, but he did it because he felt, he said, coach, I, I was trying to do the, what I felt you wanted me to do. And that was really cool. I, I, was, I told him, thank you, you know what I mean? Because he's really thinking about what it takes to win basketball games. And so Ish, is, we call him Big 12-ish. Like we like this Big 12-ish. You told a story earlier this week about Ish not diving for the line during Shark Week. Um, when was when did things kind of start to flip for him? I guess in terms of his investment and buy-in uh, to what you guys were trying to get him to do. Uh, probably like right before the Big Twelve. I think um, there was a. I can't remember what the game was, but I I didn't play him very much, and both he and and Taiki and 
you know, I just asked him, like, do you enjoy, like, sitting on the bench? Or do you go, are you going to be happy about the 12 to 15 minutes that you're playing? And um, and he, he told me his thoughts, and some of them were very valid. Like, he had very valid points. And, and we had a really good discussion, and I said, this would need from you. And uh, we started playing Big 12 games, and we've seen Big 12-ish. How important is it for you to be able to establish those kind of conversations in your first year with someone like Ish? Well, I think it's important to have those kind of conversations with all you guys. Like, I, I mean, in a day and age when guys can transfer and play right away, the portal's there. If, if, if you're playing games or you're lying to them, you're not being really transparent with them, then you're going to lose them anyhow. So I'd rather just, like, have those frank conversations and because uh, we're trying to build grown men, right? Like, take boys and make them men, and, and you have to be able to have tough conversations with them, and then they have to be able to make the right decision after that. And for some people, it's pack your bags and leave, right? But then when, you have a, when you're a husband, right, and things are going bad at the house, right, what you going to do, pack your bags and leave? No, right? We, we stick it out. We have commitments, and we stick them out. And that, those are kind of lessons that we're trying to teach these guys that are going to help them way past after they play basketball. And to see Ish respond and continue to commit to what you guys were trying to get him to do, what's that say about his character? Uh, well, I knew Ish was a high character guy all along, right? I mean, he's he's very devout in his faith, and uh, I'm so uh, you know I'm thankful for that uh, on our team, and and he's trying to do the right things. I think he just didn't know, right? Or oh, he valued some things more than another, and we just all had to figure out what we value together. We've seen you have Wabash on the court. What, what, what led you to take the next step and, and hop into the stands? Well, because everybody's been making fun of my dancing, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I was a really good dancer at some point in time, but all they see is me doing the Wabash by myself. And so they think that's how I dance. So I said, next time I do this thing, I'm jumping in with the students so they can see that everybody is doing this and I'm, I'm just being a part of them. So, that, yeah. And then how nice was it to for Keontae after a half and, and some change of, of struggling to kind of find a little bit of momentum and then kind of get his, his offensive game going. No, we needed him. You know, we told him, hey, Key, we need to be more aggressive. You know, I think he'd only taken uh, two shots or something in the first half. And, like, dude, you got to be more aggressive. And uh, and because of him taking a tough shot is sometimes better than somebody taking an open shot. And I, I thought we did a better job as a staff of um, – manipulating their defense and giving us better driving angles and things and, and putting them in a little better better position than we did in the first half. Did you guys do anything differently to get Marquise going today, or is that just him making shots and being aggressive early on? No, he was making shots and being aggressive. I, You know, Keese, I thought against Kansas that was his best point guard management game of the year, right? Like, they took things away from him. He didn't let it rattle him. He managed the game. You know, he, he, made, he did some really, really good things as a point guard, right, that don't show up in the stat sheet. Uh, but, like, that young fellow likes to see the ball go in the hole, <laughs> and that's what gets him going. And so, you know, as he was determined to have a, a, a good game today, like shooting-wise. And so, and, I, and, and we needed it, so. Coach, everyone talks, you, you and your players talk about doing the next right thing. Mm -hmm. And today you were able to do that, coming off an emotional win against KU. Some people might have thought this was a trap game, but you know Texas Tech is really good. How hungry is this team? Man. I don't know how to, how to answer that question or to gauge it. What I do know is that they're not satisfied. They don't think we're, we're as good as we can be. Um, they understand every day we keep getting better and, and, and they really love basketball. Like I got a group that really loves basketball and, and I have to monitor their time in the gym to make sure that we have legs. And so, um, you know, we, we uh, frankly, we, we, we probably enjoyed the Ka Kansas win too much and still had a little hangover in our first practice back. And I had to stop practice and say, hey, y'all go home and we'll come back tonight and because cause we're not – we're not getting better. We weren't going one and zero in practice, and they left, and we brought them back, and you know, you know, had some stuff prepared for them. Nothing physical. I'm not. I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm not an idiot. I knew we needed legs, and uh, you know, and the guys saw it and bought into what we showed them and understood. And and then the next day, we had a really good practice yesterday, which led into today. And just, what kind of dogfight is the Big Twelve? <laughs> 
Now you, you're talking about, like, when we were picked 10th in the league, I said, well, heck, all 10 teams in the conference are going to the NCAA tournament because I thought we were an NCAA tournament team. And so, you know, that's, that's what, like, there are 10 teams in our conference that could go to the NCAA tournament, good enough to go to the NCAA tournament. And, and every night you're going to be in a battle and the game is going to be different. Sometimes it's going to be up and down. Sometimes it's going to be a slower pace. Sometimes, you know, it's going to be one thing or another and you got to be able to adjust and, and, and then not let um, one loss beat you twice, right, mm -hmm. and be able to move on. This is a team you, you may, you're on the verge or nearing top 10 ranking for the first time in a decade at K-State. You were picked 10th in at the start of the season. How motivated did that make you guys? Not at all. Not at all. The, the rankings, like, don't matter at all. It matters to our fans. You know, it's, it's good for recruiting, you know, and, you know, stuff like that. But, like, for this team, right, it's, that's not what we're about. It's, it's the ranking at the end of the season that matters. I know it was only a couple minutes, but how nice was it to get David out there and in the swing of things again? Oh, it was really good. Really good. He had uh, he he moved around well yesterday. Uh, this morning he came and moved around well. Said he felt he could go some. Uh, we got a plan for bringing him back to where he was before he got hurt, and um, so very excited. Uh, Keith really filled the stat sheet tonight. What's it like seeing a five foot eight point guard grab eight rebounds? <laughs> Well, we told everybody else to hit somebody, and then Keith, you're the fastest guy. Go run in and grab the ball. And, and no, he, he's, a, he's just a competitor, right? Like, it, I mean, if there's one thing you know about that dude, he's going to compete, right? And, and it shows up, whatever we need to do to win. And then your two stars, I mean, they see it's either Keith finishing a game out or Keontae finishing a game out. How key is it them down the stretch to, you know, put, put teams away? You know, big-time players have to make big-time plays and big-time moments, and both of these guys have done that. But those other three guys that are out there with them do a really good job of setting the stage and, and doing what they need to give them the opportunity to do that. So really, winning close games down the stretch, is, it's, it's a whole team effort. And then my last one is, were you surprised at all when you initially got to campus um, to see, you know, the only two returners, that, uh, how devout they were in their faith with God? Um, yeah, yeah, because I didn't really know them. I knew they were good kids, though, and it didn't take long to figure out that, you know, they're good kids and what's important to them because I had conversations with them early, and, and I, I think that's why we, um, we, we meshed. We, you know, we gelled so, so quickly because it's something that's important to all of us regardless of what our faith is. No, I, I haven't done that with them. Coach, as far as defense goes, would you say this was one of your uh, better efforts of the season? Yeah, I mean, the numbers say it was. I, I don't know. Like, I think our first shot defense all year long has been really good. Uh, we got to figure out how to limit second chance opportunities. And uh, that, that's going to be the next thing. We're, we're cutting down on our turnovers. I, we had three of them at the end that were just dumb, right? And uh, probably I, I should have done something different with that. But, um, you know, so I, I felt like we could play this game with 11 or less turnovers. And, uh, but we, we have to make an improvement on the defensive glass. And limited Fardos down there to six points today. Um, he's widely recognized as one of the better big men in the Big 12. Um, after the performance you guys had against Eddie Lampkin and some of these other big big guys, is it kind of is it kind of nice to see that starting to figure out that area of the defense as well? Um, yeah, I mean he's 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 good and he's big, but I mean he's not Eddie, you know. I mean there's, there's a difference there, but but he's good, right? Don't get me wrong, he's good and he's huge and he caused us problems. Um, Eddie's a little different animal though. In Big 12 play, um, Keontae's recorded at least six rebounds, or eight rebounds, I mean, in all but two of your guys' games. Was that something that you guys really wanted to kind of hammer home and increase his production on the glass? No, it's what we needed. And he wants to win, and so he's doing what it takes to win. You
You know, I, I think it's important to me that um, we, we represent our community and, and our campus and learning what I have about um, the student body and, and this community is that there's a great passion there. And, and that's a good thing, but your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness a lot of times and so we just have to what we want to do is all chan channel the passion in the same direction and because nobody ever accomplishes anything great by themselves we need our student body we need our, our community to support us to make this program uh, what it's capable of being and it is capable of being one of the top five programs in America night in and night out um, every year and you know I mean that's why I came here Oh, the magic, <laughs> right? Um, man, uh, a very knowledgeable fan base. It always like, it was always like cool to me that they didn't wait for their players to make a great play to cheer. Like when things weren't going well, they would start cheering them to try and motivate them to do well. That that was really cool. And uh, and then when the students used to like come running in and you know like. That, that was when you're warming up on the floor, all of a sudden they open the door and then they come like running into their See, it's, it's, that, that's really cool. And, uh, and then I remember the students doing the uh, lions and tigers and bears, woo, you know, things. So, so you know, that kind of, um, we had some great games there. While I was at Baylor, we had the, the, the opportunity and the privilege of winning quite a bit there. And so um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I know, they are really good, man. They are really good. They're really tough. TJ's doing an unbelievable job uh, with them, and uh, so it's going to be another Big 12 battle. Do you have more and more discussions with your team about kind of having the target on your back since you'll be sole possession of first place for that night? Yeah, you know, um, yes, yes, we do talk about it. Not because we'll be in sole possession. Like, where it is at right now, um, I, 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 we were uh, – we, one year we was two and eight at Baylor. And won like eight of the next nine games, right? And I'm going to the NCAA tournament. And then one year we were like four and one or something, and then lost like ten of eleven or something, right? So like where you're at right now doesn't matter. It's like what are you gonna do next and the next thing. So, but the fact that other teams prepare for us differently, right? Their, their players are more focused. We talk about that all the time. How focused were we going into game X or game Y or game Z? And they'll say, very focused. And I say, well, now they, they are doing that for us. So we have to raise our level of focus because the coaches don't have to motivate them when you have a number in front of your name. Anything else? Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you all. Go Cats.